Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Kristen. I go by Little Tiny Egg here on the internet. I thought today that I would show you how I stay organized as an artist and do a little techo kaigi, if you will, a little journaling, planning, sit down video with you. Talk about my planning routine, how I get stuff done, how I take ideas from like ephemeral thoughts to like actual actionable things. It is currently the end of February when I'm filming this, so I have been using this planner routine setup for the last two months since the beginning of 2023 and yeah I'm just gonna talk about how I arrived here what I have been doing what's been working for me and what I potentially might want to change so that's this video I hope that you like it and let's get started the first piece of this puzzle that is the most important is my morning pages journal aka just a blank Midori sketchbook that I write stream of consciousness in. If you don't know what morning pages are, they are uh, a concept introduced by Julia Cameron in her book The Artist's Way. It's basically where you just write three pages of stream of consciousness journaling in the morning before you get started with your artwork. I definitely don't do it every single day and I definitely don't do three pages every single day but when I do, it really helps me get my ideas out there. And then a lot of times I wake up in the morning and I'm like, okay, I have an entire day to work, but I'm not sure what takes priority. And the way that I figure that out primarily is by journaling. It's a lot of like thoughts and angry ramblings and just like all of the ugly stuff that doesn't get shown anywhere else. And it only has a couple pages left, which is why I think I am going to be switching into this a6 Hobonichi notebook. But first, before we get to that, I just want to talk about my routine with all of this. So usually in the mornings, I will sit down with this notebook and write a little bit about how I'm feeling and what I'm feeling like working on that day. And then from here, I come up with a to-do list or like action items that I need to put down. So that's where the Hobonichi Techo comes in. This is my first year using the Techo and I am really loving it so far. I love the size. This jelly sort of holographic cover is from an Etsy shop called Paperbound Creations. And it was really inexpensive and custom made to fit this A6 Techo. Like I said, I'm a full-time artist, so I don't really leave my house. <laughs> I work from home and I have a home studio, so I don't really need something. Like I know a lot of people really like the cases that have like all the pockets and it has like a wallet built into it and it is this like fully like carryable thing, but I really never leave my house with this. I hardly need to, but I did want just like a little bit more protection. Uh, the Techo just has this kind of like the same thing as the Midori going on where it's just like a cardstock cover. And I have some cute stickers on it. I'll link the stickers in the description. But yeah, let's get into the Techo. This is kind of the keystone that holds the whole system together. I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer too. So this is my first year using the Techo and I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. I was using the big spiral bound appointed planners for a long time. I think I used them for like three or four years. Um, and I was nervous about switching to something smaller and I was also nervous about switching to something that doesn't have a weekly view. But for right now, it's really working for me. So the Techos have a monthly view, like a standard monthly view. And then it's basically the rest of the book is daily pages. So every single day has a page that looks like this. I got the Japanese version mostly because I just really like the look of the Japanese at the bottom. I don't really care about the quotes. I'm not really like an inspirational quote kind of guy, but yeah, I think it looks prettier. It's like more of a decorative element and yeah, I just like that about it. And then in the back it has some blank pages and then a bunch of random stuff, but I'll show you how I'm using that later. So from my Midori morning pages, I move on to this pencil board. So this pencil board is from Hobonichi. The way that I organize this is I have two of these big sticky notes. I really like these long sticky notes because um, I primarily make lists on sticky notes. Um, I rarely write just like one thing on them. So I like to have this long one because it is just a little bit more space than like a standard size sticky note. And I have like 20 packs of these. <laughs> so I use them with reckless abandon. What I've learned from not having a weekly setup is that I don't really operate on a weekly mindset. Like I don't really think about my weeks starting over um, or things needing to be completed on a weekly basis because I don't work a traditional nine to five, like five day a week job. My partner also has Wednesday and Thursday off. So 
I don't take traditional like Saturday and Sunday off. So it's kind of nice to just have the same amount of space dedicated to every single individual day as like a unit. But there is just stuff that I need to keep on my mind that can't be done in a single day. So that's where this running to-do list comes from. And it's mostly small stuff. Like I will write, you know, reschedule my dentist appointment, send Brooke images, pick up um, like a print order or do my applications for a farmer's market. Stuff that I can complete in one chunk of tasks. This is about as small as these tasks get. Like there isn't something smaller than this. Like I have a task for a print that I needed to package and then right next to it I wrote ship. And then on the other side is big things. These are like big tasks that feel intimidating and large and need to be broken down into smaller categories. So usually it's like two or three or four of these listed items make up one of these big things. Nora, come here. <laughs> Why are you sad? Nora wants to say hi. Like I have my video ideas here and typically I will put like film, edit, thumbnail, post on this side. And then like big stuff, like I really wanna design a long sleeve t-shirt. I will always look at this list first and then look back here to pull from ideas to add to this. Usually but when I have like two or three or four to-do list items left on here, but this is just getting really filled up, I will just toss this and then migrate tasks onto a new sticky note. And I really like the migration of like starting a new sticky note. And then just for like posterity, I don't really feel a need to hang on to my to-do list. Like, I don't feel really any attachment to this sticky note, so it's fine for me to like just recycle it and I don't have to have that taking up space in my planning system. I always keep this pencil board in the day that I am on in the notebook. So I don't really use the beginning pages of the Techo. I don't use these. It's just like too small and my brain doesn't work like this. I don't have enough like monthly things going on to where this would be useful. Um, if I need something like this, I'll just look at my phone. So hardly ever look at that. And then I have been doing um, a daily habit tracker in here. This is the first time that I've used a habit tracker in a really long time. I used to do like a monthly one when I was bullet journaling, but I have just really found that this is nice. I don't have to set anything up. It's all like gridded in there. So you can look and read the things that I track, but it's mostly just like flossing and moving my body. And I like to keep track of drawing and painting just to see like how many days I'm actually making art a month. And then I do have my Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon on there too, so that I can keep track of how many times I've posted in a month. And then <laughs> Nora's running around. The key I think for me to keeping this going has been Having something on here that I do pretty much every day, having that like daily task versus just like exercise or drawing or whatever, I wouldn't necessarily be like opening up this page every day to like know to fill it out. And then these monthly spreads, I am keeping track of monthly appointments and things in red pen. It looks kind of crazy with all this doodling, but then I have also been doing a daily doodle in here as well. Yeah, so this one that I did in, in December, since the um, daily pages hadn't started yet, it's more of like a visual diary. So it's like stuff that I was doing during the day, like I wrote cleaned and packed or like went skiing or something. But then as the daily pages started, it kind of started becoming just like a unrelated doodle. That's what these are, that's for January. And then this is February's. Today is the 28th, so last day of February, I just did this little tulip doodle today. I got asked um, last time I posted this on like my Instagram story, someone was like, oh, do the doodles have anything to do with like the day? But a lot of the times it's just like a random thing. And if I ever need inspiration for what to draw, I'll just look at my camera roll and just like stuff that I see in my daily life. And it's not really like a sketchbook. I'm just like doing it to do a doodle <laughs> and it's been fun, so. And then you can see like, this is what next month looks like. I haven't drawn anything on it yet, but it's like, my parents are gonna be here this week. I have a doctor's appointment and it's my birthday. So that's like what my monthly calendar looks like. And I do flip back to this page every day to do my doodles as well. So that's where I do, I guess like in the planner community, you would call this like future planning. So planning for things that haven't happened yet versus like keeping track of things that you did. Yep, and then the first couple of pages of the new year have these blanks here and I wrote my art goals and keeping track of my social media growth on these pages. It's kind of nice to flip back to these about once a month and kind of just like review what my intentions were at the beginning of the year. So I want to up update my website at some point. I want to start a mailing list or a newsletter and I'm trying to do one large painting every single month. You can 
see more about that in like my vlogs and stuff. I'm trying to upload at least two YouTube videos a month. The last couple months I've done more, but that's what I'm keeping track of there. So I have like the main goal and then the sub goal. I made like little check off boxes too for that. And then I'm trying to do one Instagram post and one reel every week. I've kind of fallen off with this. I don't really care about Instagram as much right now. It's kind of annoying me. I want to apply for three artist residencies. I've applied for one. I want to paint a mural. I am going to be an apprentice artist at a mural fest this spring and I'm really excited. So I think I'm just gonna like check that off as painting a mural. I'm gonna try to vend at 10 art markets. So I have 10 little boxes here. Redesign and reprint stickers. I probably could check that off. I have redesigned a couple of my like most popular stickers. I really wanna design washi tape and notepads like some something like this but prettier. And I really wanna design a tote bag or something wearable. I want to do a 2024 calendar. I wanna just create more value on my Patreon. And then I want, I'm aiming for $1,500 a month in revenue from my art business. And then these are like my TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon stats for every month. It's only been January and February since I've been tracking that. There is this blank page at the beginning of every month and it has given me space to do a tarot card reading which is really fun so at the beginning of every month i do a three card tarot reading the first one being the thing that you want to fade out of influence the next one being an idea that's growing within you and then the third one is something you want to commit to going forward and then i do like a little doodle of uh, what the card looks like and some of the characteristics i guess of the card i've been getting more into tarot i think doing like a daily poll is probably too much but doing a monthly one is really helpful and then at the end of the month i've been looking back on this and then just like journaling a little bit of that in my journal and then as far as the daily pages go the way that i do the daily pages has changed over time since the beginning of the year just because i haven't used this planning system before but i've just been pulling tasks from my to-do list and then entering them into these five little tick boxes here at the top. It's really helpful actually to have kind of like a limited number and I really can only get like five tasks done in a day anyway. So I just migrate those here. And then it also helps me when I'm looking back, I have kind of a bad memory. So when I'm looking back at like, what did I do like two or three days ago? I can be like, oh yeah, I went Nordic skiing. I did that form, I did some paperwork and had some sketchbook time. So just like a short little bullet point list of what I did in the day. And it's for productivity, but it's also for memory keeping. I like don't have a super clear boundary of those in my head right now. So I have been adding stickers and doodling and usually I will just like write a little bit about my day in here. I think at the end of the year, I will try to do a flip through of this whole book. It'll probably be really long, but so far, like looking at these, it really makes me happy that I have been committed to this. All of this would get lost. Like my journaling practice is so stream of consciousness and so like internal that it's not really like your diary today. I did this and I saw this person and I went here. Like that's not how I am drawn to journaling it's more just like feelings that i need to get out and ideas that i've been having and so having these be like oh yeah i went to solitude with anna i went to round valley with rar since i do have the japanese version i've been finding it really helpful to write the day of the week because i can't i can like remember the japanese characters but it's just quicker for my english speaking brain to just be like oh yeah saturday sunday so for february i just went through and wrote the day of the week for every single day at the beginning of the month, which was really helpful so you don't have to do it every day. I really like this kind of layout where I'm writing the day of the week, these are my little tasks, and then I write like the big thing that I did that day, like I went skiing at Alta, and then I wrote some stuff about like what happened and you know things for just like posterity, my memory. Yeah, I really like these bubble letters, they're pretty fun. And sometimes I'll stick stuff in here, like I just stuck this little sticky note and this day I purged my closet. I really like this mushroom guy. So it is kind of like a sketchbook or a, a visual journal, but I'm not really trying to make every page shareable or like pretty necessarily, which is really freeing for me because even in my sketchbooks, I feel kind of not stifled, but like it has to be presentable. For a while I was like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna use my red and black Muji pens in here, but I've since just kind of given up on that, which I think is fine. I'm using Muji pens. I'm using these Tombow Fudunosuke pens. I use this little fine point marker from Jet Pens a lot. So yeah, that's basically how I've been using it. 
as a to-do list and then also a memory keeper at the same time and then like a little doodle diary. It is bulking up the book quite a bit. So I'll definitely check back in at the end of the year if you guys are interested and we can flip through the whole book together and I can talk about how my style changes in here because I'm sure things will change, but this is what's been working for me for the last couple of months. I also have these book darts and these ones are thin enough for this Tomoe River paper like to just mark a single page, which is really nice and satisfying. So I usually have one of those on the monthly page that I'm on and then like my daily habit tracking pages too. And then there's more in the cover. I There's a little favorites list, which I've been really enjoying using. I wish it was longer because I feel like I'm gonna have more favorites. I haven't been like separating it by category. I'm doing like movies, TV shows, food and music and books and stuff. So then there's also the My 100, which I haven't used at all. I was thinking of maybe doing like a gratitude list or like things I like or things I like to draw or something back here. Yeah, if you have any ideas for what I should do back there, let me know. So that is basically all of the stuff I'm doing in my Techo. This thing is kind of hard to close sometimes. And then I just recently got this little guy. It is from Hobonichi as well, but it is just like an A6 gridded notebook. I have just like a couple pages left of this notebook. While I do love the Midori paper, I feel like this is just like so much space to do stream of consciousness writing. So I like the idea of doing it in here and then I could potentially just take these two A6 books with me. like if I'm traveling or just like taking this outside or like in my backpack or something. It's not quite small enough to put in like a jacket pocket, but these two books together make a lot more sense to me than this book and this book because this one is like standard A5 size. So I'm excited to finish this and then get into this little one. I also have all these cute gridded sticky notes, which are all from Mochi Things, which is one of my favorite stationary websites. So yeah, that is my journal and planning system for 2023, at least the first two months of it. It's working for me right now. I'm enjoying myself. I really love the Hobonichi stuff. I love the Tomoe River paper. But yeah, I wanted to just sit down and talk to you guys about how I stay organized as an artist. I know a lot of people are big on Notion and like digital planning systems, but for me, I really need um, my planning to be physical. And I really enjoy the physicality of like writing things down, using nice paper, being intentional with like your handwriting and stuff. It just feels like a more sacred practice. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention my sticker pack. A lot of these stickers are just from booklet of planner stickers from Michaels. And then there are some like actual stickers from like my art friends and, and a bunch of these random frog and reptile stickers and stuff in here. I really like just having a dedicated little pouch for these. I don't know where this jelly cover came from. I feel like it had like makeup brushes or something in it at some point. So that's my little sticker pouch. So yeah, that's just like what works for me. I hope that you enjoyed this chatty little video. My name's Kristen and I go by Little Tiny Egg on Instagram, TikTok, and everywhere on the internet. And if you wanted to subscribe or like this video, I would really appreciate it. I am still a very small YouTuber and trying to grow more in 2023. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.